Winning Cures Everything Top 10 after week number nine in college football. Brought to you by Tunica, Mississippi, the South's premier sports gambling destination. They got six wonderful sports books down there. They got the Horseshoe, the Gold Strike, Samstown, Hollywood, First Jackpot, and the Fitz Casino. You can find all of the information over at tunicatravel.com. You can watch and wager on any ball game down there. So go check that thing out. You can get our picks, our previews, our top ten, all of our stuff over at winningcureseverything.com. Hit that subscribe button if you're watching on YouTube or if you're listening on the podcast. Make sure and follow us on social media, Facebook, Twitter, all the wonderful things. Let's jump in. We'll start off with number 10. You want to go first? You want me to? I'll go first. Go ahead. Go ahead. Number 10, I got Oklahoma. Wow, you got them low. I, I, they, they've got they've only played a couple of good games. They've lost a, a team that's got two bad losses. I don't know. They might have the worst loss, I guess, right? Out of all the teams that I've got up here, they've got the worst loss. Eh, maybe not. Like, if you got Washington State in there, Washington State's lost to USC. Nah, but bad. that's bullshit. That's not a good loss. That's not a bad loss because it shouldn't be a loss. Okay. That's okay. Pac-12 chicanery. <laughs> all right, so Oklahoma, number 10 for you. Oklahoma, number 10 to me. I've got number 10, Washington State. See, you just, you're just treating them like they lost to USC. That's all. I'm also looking at it as treat them like they beat you. Do I do I think that they would lose to these other teams? Mm. And yeah, I see, I only do my top ten based off what I have seen, not what I think. Okay, and I do and, my I do my top four when we do our playoff predictions of what I think is going to happen. Okay, okay, that's how I roll. Um, I will tell you this: got to have rules. We we do have. We obviously look at our top ten completely different, which yes. I think is what like AP writers do as well. But that's why you've got such I, a wide variety. I think they should. Yeah. I think they should. And I and I also think you should stop trying to predict what's going to happen with a top 10 and only judge what you have seen. Because if you just start chalking up W's, everybody in the country would have said, well, Texas is going to beat Oklahoma State. They're terrible. So, yeah, no, you're right. You're I'm right. going to put them here. Well, guess what? You were wrong. Dead, dead wrong. Dead wrong. All right, so, yeah, I mean, I've got Washington State here. Uh, the wins that they that they have now. Eh, I mean, not not great wins, but like still big for them. Uh, Oregon went and got hammered by Arizona, so that win isn't as the rest of the Pac-12 is crazy. It's yeah. chaotic. My thing is this: as chaotic as the Pac-12 is, they are finding themselves above the chaos. Yes, and, they are, and I think that's important. If the Pac-12 was just bad, then I would say I'd be having a different conversation. But I think there is so much chaos there. The fact that they are finding themselves above all that chaos. Right now, that's a big deal. It also helps that Washington State is eight and zero against the spread this year. Oh yeah, they're they're winning seven and they're one winning handily. Yeah, seven and one straight up, eight and zero against the spread. Who got number nine? My number nine is Kentucky. I think Kentucky is a really good football team that we have not been given the credit they need to go this far in the SEC and and to have one loss and it's not even a bad loss. I I think I'm giving them to them, man. They they they've earned this. Yeah, yeah. I uh, I also have Kentucky at nine. Okay. Um, and now that I'm looking at this, I think I actually flipped to where I had Washington State nine. Either way, Washington State and Kentucky right there, even with each other, to me, Gee. um, I think that this would be a really fun matchup. Like one is in, an insanely defensive team, runs the football, you know, lim- limits possessions. The other is we're going to throw it all over the yard, and we still got a good enough defense to beat you. Right, so I think that'd be a lot of fun. I think Kentucky is a really good football team. This week, SEC East Championship game. I mean, it's big. Against Georgia. So we, we're going to have a lot of fun previewing that game this week. But for now, Kentucky number nine. My number eight team, I dropped a team down that didn't even play. And I normally hate doing that. But I'm, I'm dropping UCF. Most people don't give them any credit. They don't give me any respect. They don't even think they should be in the top ten. I think that's just complete poppycock complete bull and i think they're a good team but two teams jumped them this week because of the play that they had on the field and i can't disrespect it i can understand that i still like central florida a lot ucf i dropped out of my top 10 i know i've got ohio state at number eight i think that the purdue game was an outlier i think that was not who that team is 
and they do this every year, right? Ohio State last year gets hammered at Iowa, and then they come back and they beat Michigan, they win the Big Ten, all this kind of stuff, right? They hammer USC in the bowl game. Like, they do this kind of thing every year. I don't think they're as good as they were last year, but I do think that Ohio State is still a top-10 team. I would just disagree there. That's that's okay. They they've looked you can bad. Be wrong. They've looked bad against a lot of people. You dis- yeah, no, you're you right. dis- you discredit other teams that look bad but still get wins sometimes. I, I I don't know why we keep giving Ohio State credit for it. And and we can't just assume their schedule, but I just don't like that team. My next team, my number seven team is Georgia. I think they proved it in the cocktail party. They got one loss to a really good L S U team and uh and, and that was on the road. Uh and they're still a really good football team. I think I think there's no reason to assume that they couldn't play their way back into this thing. Oh, I, I, I'm with you. I'm with you on that. Uh, number seven, I've got Oklahoma. Uh, they dismantled Kansas State the way that you should, not the way that Oklahoma State played. <laughs> I would, I, you can't compare Oklahoma State and Oklahoma this season, but uh, gracious, Oklahoma, like that offense is something else if – if you lose, it, like, if you don't have control of the game at any point, it can get really ugly well, yeah. on you. And this offense is something else. The defense is playing way better since they fired uh, uh, Stoops, Mike Stoops. Lincoln Riley, like, yeah, this is a guy that should be coaching on Sundays. He should no, be coaching he, in the NFL. There's a really good chance that he's going to. Yeah. Um, if he wants to, I should say. Yeah, he'll have the offer. My my problem with Oklahoma is they have looked just as bad as they have looked good. Yeah. And they have not won those games. And 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 then they've they've won games. They should have like no one in the country is gonna say you play Army to a stalemate and then you pull out an all upset you know, a late last minute win against them and think that's a good thing for your team. It's yeah. just not. So just because you dismantled a bad Kansas State, I mean a really I, oh, I agree. bad, I historically agree. bad Kansas State, I give you nothing. My number six team, Mike Leach in Wazoo. I think they're the number six team in the country, and I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I think they're really good. I think they could beat anybody they line up against. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I think their defense is exceptionally well. It, yeah, and it, I think, defense is really I think good. their offense, just as good. Yeah, no, that, that offense is They might else. be the most complete team in the country offense and defense-wise. I don't know okay. that they grade that way through all the stats, but I'm going to tell you, watching them offensively, I think they can score on any possession they want. They're a, they're and, a top 25 defense. And watching them defensively, I think they can stop anybody they want. Yeah, I, I think you're probably right. Like, so, I don't think they can stop anybody. It, well, okay, maybe Like, not, Stanford but, put up 38 points on them. Well, yeah. But, obviously, like, it was very impressive for them you to get go get what a win. At, yes, absolutely. When, when they need to make a stop, they can make a stop. They, they might not stop. dominate a game, but they can make a stop to win a yeah, game. Yeah, they, they got the horses in the trenches now. They Like, they've done a good job. They've developed some good players. I really like them. Number six, I've got Georgia. That win over Florida was impressive. I, I feel like the LSU loss was kind of the outlier. Kind of like I was talking about with Ohio State, like sometimes there's just that one game that that gets you, right? Okay. Georgia, I feel like they had one game that just that that got them. And no, I don't think Georgia is as good as they were last year. No, I don't either. But but they show that they definitely they're not close. Definitely not. Um, and I don't think they are quite the rushing team that they were last year. Like their offensive line isn't as good. They don't have the same kind of running backs. Like I, Holyfield and and Swift are good. They're not Michelle and Chubb. Yeah, and and that'll take a long time to develop. But Georgia, right now, like I, I think this, I think this is a top six team. Um, who you got number five? Number five, I got Michigan. I know I had LSU here last week, and LSU didn't play. I don't know why I would have jumped them, but other than the fact that I just, I flipped them. So do I, we have? The, we got the same. Are we going up from there? Yeah, we're going. To, I, I got Michigan at number five. Uh, I got LSU at four. Four. You Clemson, got the same thing. Three. I've got Notre Dame three. So you drop Notre Dame when they didn't play anybody. When they played Navy, and and what were they supposed to do to Navy? I beat them. Exa- that was almost on the exact line. Okay, so they did exactly what they were supposed to do. And they, I think and that they Clemson fell. has looked much better than them the last three. You weeks. you give more into recency bias than anybody I've ever met in my life. Uh, the whole first part of the year just doesn't even matter. No, and, it matters. And Clemson has had two good games. Now they're back to back, two good games with against three against two. 
bad teams we're finding out. NC State, not as good as we thought they were. And Florida State, never as good as anybody thought they were. They're garbage. And so they beat the hell out of two bad teams, and all of a sudden they're jumping up over a Notre Dame team whose schedule's twice as difficult as Clemson's ever going to be. Way bigger wins than Clemson's ever going to have. Yeah. Matt, that's just total <laughs> recency bias. You watched something yesterday, and it drew a spark in your eye. Okay. Now, I did watch Notre Dame last night, and I did watch Clemson yesterday. And so I feel like Clemson's the better football team. Neither team has a loss. Okay. You know, I mean, we'll I've got, see. I've got Notre Dame, too. I've got Bama 1. That's, I got Bama 1. Yeah. yeah. I mean, they didn't play. Uh, I don't know. Up. Clemson looks pretty good, and Alabama didn't look good Saturday. We might put them on. I don't know. Entirely possible. I might put them on. Totally reasonable right it now. It would not be reasonable. <laughs> it would be the dumbest thing you could ever imagine. That's going to be our Winnie Cures Everything Top 10 for college football week number nine. <sighs> Go watch our playoff prediction video. <laughs> 